Okay, today I'm joined by Christian, who's recently uh, traveled to, to Wuhan in China. Uh, and today we're going to talk a little bit about the process of getting there and especially the green code. Um, yeah, so Christian, first of all, like, what's it been like in, in China? So it's, uh, it's been good. Um, it's definitely different to uh, England, probably a little bit more relaxed when you actually get here. Um, there's not, not a lot of like um, hand sanitizing stations, nothing like that. And people kind of just go about their day like it's, I think, every other day, really. So it's good. Yeah, absolutely. And then so in terms of the, the green code itself, like what, what is it? Because I know that, you know, it's obviously a complicated process. So what is the green code? So a green code basically allows you to travel from different countries. Um, it will go amber if I think you're, uh, you're waiting on something and red if uh, you basically can't go due to uh, it's not your time, basically. Um, so the green code is completely different to the visa. So you need your visa um, to get a green code. So it's not you don't need your green code to get a visa. It's you need your visa to get a green code. So there are um, six um, components to getting a uh, green code. I'll just read these out. Um, first, you need to uh, you'll need to upload this to uh, I think one of the government uh, websites, which I'm sure we can send the link out. Uh, that's your seven day uh, COVID test, which is your PCR. Uh, then you've got to take your 48 hour test, uh, which is your PCR and IgM. Um, your passport, um, your seven day personal health monitoring form, which again you can find on uh, the Chinese embassy website. You upload your visa and then your travel itinerary. Um, so that's why um, you have to get your visa first because you'll have to upload your um, visa um, to, for this process. Yeah, exactly. So in terms of uh, helping people plan for the, the timeline, like how, how much time before you got the green code did you get the visa in your passport and were you done with the visa? Yeah, so the visa probably came, that's a good question, probably two, two three weeks before, I think. Um, may, maybe even longer. Um, I, I, it was, the process for me was once I got my visa, it was then to then search the flights because everything else was taken care of. And I'm pretty sure um, my visa was issued maybe in October, I think. And then I flew in September. So I think it was about a month, actually. Um, so, yeah, first thing first, get your visa and then you can worry about um, your green code. You don't need to worry about it until you get your visa, basically. Yeah. So to confirm, you got you also got your flights before you got a green code, did you? Uh, yes, yeah. So um, you, you, can, you can only really upload um, your green, green code probably the day before you, um, you fly um, because of your test results. So um, you, you get your seven day test results um, pretty much the day after you've um, taken your test. It's the 48 hour test results you have to wait for because you have to take it 48 hours before departure. Um, and I should say that it's seven days before departure. Um, but your 48 hour one, you get that back pretty much the next day. Um, I got mine in the evening around, I think, half 10 and I was flying um, or I was leaving my house at like nine in the morning. Um, so I, I got my results back around, yeah, half 11, 12 o'clock. That's when you upload your, um, all your documents for your green code. And it was very quick. Mine came back within probably three hours, um, two, three hours. Um, and th then it was good to go. Then I had the green code. And so the green code itself, is it, is it, uh, you've got it on an app on your phone, right? Uh, so I went to a website. Um, you basically register your details and then it, it, it's very, very straightforward. It basically says health declaration form, click on it. Um, and then it, it takes you through all of the uh, information you need. And that's when the things I read out, you just need to upload. Um, and if you, if you're, um, in any doubts of what to upload, feel free to just ask me because it's I, I've got it all written down anyway. So yeah, okay, brilliant. Well, so um, in terms of um, um, of the process, so you mentioned two tests, so the seven day test and a forty eight hour test. How did you personally go about picking providers for those tests, sure. and what did you look at? Yeah, sure. So uh, the seven day, um, you can go to any UK official medical institution. So I went to my um, local shopping center and they had, um, they actually have written like fit to fly to China type stuff, um, but it's any kind of U UK 
um, legal practice, and it says that on the Chinese website. Um, so you can pick any, anything close by um, and call them up just just to be sure, just to make sure you can actually do it for China because they do offer packages and everything like that. Um, the 48 hour test, uh, you have to um, choose a Chinese government specific institution. You find that on, on their website. And I believe there were two in London and one in Birmingham. Um, I'm sure there's other stuff in Manchester, but they were the ones close by to me. Uh, I picked the Birmingham one um, because I was thinking I have to be relatively safe in terms of COVID. Um, the two London ones were right in the centre, so I'd have to probably get a tube, walk through the centre, and I just felt like it would be uh, the smart choice to maybe just go to Birmingham as it was they had their own clinic. Um, so yeah, that's, and that's where I went. Yeah, absolutely. And it sounds like clearly like these need to be in, in-person tests, right? Both of them. Yes, def- def- definitely in person. Yeah, you have to go, you've got to bring your passport. Um, very, very quick tests to take 15 minutes. Um, but yeah, very, very, very quick. The one thing I'll say about the 48 hour test is the, and I'll try and get, try and get this uh, fully right. It's quite technical, I guess, but you, you, you get an M protein test and the M protein test basically says if you've, I believe had COVID or not. Um, and because if your IgM comes back positive, which shows that you've got antibodies in your body, um, that's when the M protein will hopefully come back negative for you to say, okay, well, you've got antibodies. Um, this is if you've had the vaccine in mind. Um, so you've had, you've had the vaccine, you've had um, your antibodies in, in, in you, and then the M protein basically just backs that up saying, yes, that's, that's the, um, the vaccine, not COVID. Um, because there was issues a month ago now um, in Paris, where, where I flew before me, um, they had an IgM test positive, but they didn't have a negative um, M protein. And there was just a bit of confusion, which stressed a lot of people out. So make sure you speak to them about the M protein, um, because that's quite important. That could be an important factor. Yeah, absolutely. And then, I mean, the, the, the costs of some of these processes is also a big factor. So can you talk a little bit about uh, any costs involved, basically, in obtaining the green code? Yeah, let me just refer to my... Uh, uh, notes. So the seven day PCR test, uh, that cost me £60. Um, and that's at my own institution, like locally. Um, the 48 hour test, um, it's, it was called a China standard PCR test in COVID antibody IgG slash IgM venomous. This cost £250. Um, so it was quite, it, it's, it is expensive. Um, you have to then book one in your designated um, um, layover. Uh, So in Paris, you have to uh, book a test there. And that again, cost me 250 quid. Um, You book that once you've booked your flight. Um, Sorry, not when you booked your flight. When you get your flight details, you put it into the uh, Charles de Gaulle website and then it says book your your test. And that's that's what I did, but it is quite expensive. Yeah. And so clearly the, the Paris portion, the layover uh, test, you, you booked in advance as well, right? Yeah, everything in, in advance. And I, I would re- recommend do, doing everything in, in advance. Make sure you know exactly what you're doing. Um, so for me in these situations, there's nothing worse than kind of, kind of second guessing, because if you get it wrong, there's really no time to sort it out. So make sure once you've got that visa, you look online on the Chinese embassy website, know exactly what you need to do, write a list and make sure you hit every single one of them. Because if you miss something, it could be crucial uh, and you could end up not flying because of it. So I can't stress that enough. Make sure you, you've done your research. Yeah, absolutely. So two things. So one thing is in terms of the layover location at the airport, was there a choice there or did you just pick the only option in Paris that was available for testing? Yeah, so there's only one testing in Charles de Gaulle. I wasn't allowed to leave the, um, the airport. Um, again, if people are going through Amsterdam, I'm sure there's, it's probably a similar process. But from what I've kind of known and spoke to people, it, I think it's just one testing centre um, in each airport. Um, but you're not allowed to leave, so don't leave by mistake. <laughs> yeah. No, exactly. Exactly. So... Um... Then the general other point I want to ask you about is just that this obviously, even in talking about it now and, and speaking with you at the time, 
uh, it's a it's a quite a an intense process, quite a, a very stressful process, in fairness. So how did you manage that? And kind of what are your tips to people, you know, who are looking to do this in the near future? Yeah, um, in terms of how I managed it, I just, I just kind of did. Um, it's one of those things that you kind of had to look ahead and go, look, once, once this stressful period is out, I can then put my feet up in a hotel for the next two, four weeks or, or whatever. So once I get through this, it will all kind of, um, be hopefully smooth smooth sailing um the one thing i will stress is just be prepared um know exactly what you're doing um once once you know what you're doing exactly you can follow the process there shouldn't really be any issues with it falling down uh outside of your hands like thing i i, I think is important is make sure if it does fall down for whatever reason make sure it's not you make sure it's a th th third party thing or you know something like that so do everything you can to basically stay on track and you should, shouldn't have any issues. Yeah, exactly. And so be, and before we go to the, the next part, maybe the next video in terms of, um, you know, your, the period after this and quarantine and the flight itself and everything, maybe one aspect you mentioned in terms of preparation, I know that we spoke quite a lot about the WeChat groups. So can you talk a little bit about the WeChat groups and how you use them? Yeah, so I got added to a Paris room WeChat group. So... I don't actually know how everyone got put in there, but basically everyone who was flying through Paris, um, that's regardless of being from the UK, someone flew from Italy, the UK, Germany, um, and basically everyone just talks about either their experience, if they've recently just gone, or if they have any questions about going. Um, and even if you might not think, even if you've got everything sorted, there might be something that creeps up and go, oh, I didn't know that, that's good to know. Um, so yeah, try, try and get on to one of the, once you've found out your route, uh, I guess speak to you Arnold about getting put, put into the Paris or the Amsterdam group. And um, yeah, just listen and even introduce yourself and say, if you've got any questions, ask, because I'm sure someone's going through the same thing or they've gone through it. Yeah, exactly. Okay, well, look, I'll put uh, some of our contact details in the link in the description. So check that out and definitely contact me if you have questions and just a matter of being added on, on WeChat. So we'll be right back with it, another video that's also in the description about sort of the next step and Christian in, in, uh, in China now. So, so check that out.